Hey everyone, Matthew Jones from Harker Heights Ceramic Coatings in Central Texas. Today, I'm gonna to show you how we're gonna polish this C7 Corvette. Okay, so we just got done clay barring this car using the purest uh, C1 clay bar, and now we're gonna polish it to restore any shine, and we're gonna remove some of these swirls for this client and get this C7 Corvette cleaned up real nice. So today what I'm gonna be using is I'm gonna be using my Flex PXE 80 cordless polisher, some Lake Country Blue HDO pads, and Sonax cut and finish. That's my go-to combination for a one-step car. Uh, and we're also gonna be using our scan grip lights and inspection lights to inspect the panel after we're done. We also have nine scan grip multi-match eights around the shop and ScanGrip makes a great inspection light that's designed to bring out and see imperfections so that everything that we're doing is not obscured by bright light that washes out those scratches. So it definitely helps us see when we're correcting and we're gonna get started with the Lake Country HDO and the Sonax cut and finish. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is load my pad with Sonax cut and finish. Now we got a cross pattern on here depending upon where you've been to training or what you know, you may do dots but we're gonna take this and then we're gonna run this on an extremely low setting. And we're gonna work that product in. We always wanna start with a small test spot to see if our pad and polish combo uh, achieves the desired results and it's going to be a section it's about six times the size of the pad uh, more or less and it's going to be right in this little one foot one foot area Okay, you notice I did a few overlapping patterns uh, and it took about 45 seconds or more, maybe a minute, and we got about three or four passes and then we're gonna wipe it off and I'm gonna take a look and see if I've achieved my desired results. Now we have the scan grips on the ceiling and it does a pretty great job, uh, but if I wanna be ultra specific, I do have a scan grip pen. And I'm gonna look in this area that I'm in right in here, which is the bulk of my correction, is exactly what we're trying to achieve in, a one, in this one step uh, paint correction. There's no, um, there's no hazing or anything and it looks nice and shiny. We'll see if we can capture it on camera for you. Okay, every time I lift the pad from the surface of the vehicle, I clean the pad out. I use a Tornador air compressed uh, tool and you could use something similar to this to blow it out. And I switch pads about every quarter of the car. So I'll go, I would go through four pads for this car. And so I'm gonna clean this out and then I'm gonna continue polishing. But you saw the speed in which I was moving. You saw how much product I use on a three inch pad. I use about three small, tiny pea sized drops toward the outside. On a five or six inch polisher, probably use four drops of uh, cut and finish and then a approximately one minute work time, but really two to four passes overlapping. And you can see, I'm just gonna show you before I finish cleaning. You can see here where the blowout tool cleaned up the pad compared to the product still remaining in the pad. And we want that product out of the pad for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, we don't want it self to scratch the paint later on. We don't want as much dust. We want the pad as light and clean as possible for a couple of reasons. If it, the pad is overloaded, it won't work as well. And not only will it not work as well, the pad will be heavier. It'll generate and retain more heat and heat is the enemy of foam. So we always wanna keep our pads nice and clean. And if you start to feel it get like too squishy or compressed, it's time to change that pad. But as a general rule, about four uh, quadrants of the vehicle change your pad. Something that's important to note is we need to set realistic expectations for ourselves or the client or whoever we're doing this work for. And the reason is, is we don't wanna chase every single scratch constantly 
uh, to the point where we're degrading the clear coat. So we want to set realistic expectations that not every paint correction may be perfect. And in a situation like a one step like this, we're really satisfied with the results on the passenger side of this hood. So I love the Flex PXE 80 because it gets in all, most of the nooks and crannies and where the three inch uh, extension or pad size doesn't work, we also have the one inch and the one inch rotary as well as the 140 flexible extension with the um, cones and the other pads that can get in behind uh, door handles. But you see, I got a scan grip light on the floor even though I have them on the ceiling just so I can see what I'm doing and nothing's hidden. Slow is fast. And if we are taking our time and checking every panel, then we never have to come back and fix something that we missed later on. Okay, so we have polished this whole vehicle with one step using Lake Country Blue HDO and Sonax Cut and Finish, which is my favorite combo. And then the one thing I really like about Sonax products is when I do my panel wipe before I ceramic coat, and the panel wipe is to remove any residues, oils, or contaminants, remaining contaminants off the surface. Um, when I do my panel wipe, what you see is what you get. What, what I mean is some polishes have fillers, and so when you do the panel wipe, prior to the panel wipe, you think, oh, this panel is perfect, and then you do the panel wipe and you see swirls reappear. Well, you won't see that when you're using Sonax Cut and Finish. I wipe the panel, it looks exactly the same as before, but now there's no oil or residue, so the ceramic coating will bond better to the painted surface.